Hello and welcome to this maybe slightly unexpected top eight game. Yes, why is it unexpected, Rebecca? Um, because you was in charge of recording them. Because Rebecca told you all that I'd cocked up the recording. <laughs> what actually happened was Rebecca cocked up looking at the memory card. Yeah, but we have a guest today! Hi, Alex! Hi. Ophie Worth? Indeed. Indeed? Yes. Is that your name? You did, and you got it right. Um, I did, indeed. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. So, yes. Alexander, do you yes. come here often? <laughs> I mean, I do. Um, <laughs> and I'm especially glad to be here to watch my fellow metamate and the man who knocked me out of the cut, Joe Harrison, play what is going to be an exciting game against it, it looks exciting. Fealty. Can you talk me through the complexities of Joe's setup? Yeah, so Joe has marshaled Asher Greyjoy, who's a great card. He's also marshaled a card in Shadows and No Economy. So he's going to need to open a high economy plot first, because he's going to need to recover, because Ben Cotton's board setup is incredible. He's got Drogo, Targoyalist, Flea Bottom, and an Illyrious Estate, which is great. So it's all going to come down to what first plot he plays. <laughs> so as you'll see now, he's just got Naval. <laughs> <laughs> Which does, is and does Joe you not know about being able. <laughs> no, and what I enjoy is Joe's looking at this with a grin of respect, <laughs> which and he knows he's fucked. <laughs> but, but so he, um, basically, Ben opened Naval um, every single game he played during uh, Grand Champs um, and hit every time. Um, and Joe somehow hadn't heard about this and just got. Navelled. I mean, to be fair, other people have heard about it and also got navelled. <laughs> so, I don't think Yeah, but Joe's... I think they did it knowingly. <laughs> I mean... If they did, I mean, James played Ben in the Swift and then still opened at the gates into naval, like, later in the tournament, so... It's true. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, Joe's unfortunate here that his setup was as bad as it was. I mean, presumably he had, you know, he'd done a mulligan. He had mulligan, looked. yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it, it is tough. I mean, this happens, and Ben was playing naval and he flipped it, and it's had a huge impact in this game. But he's not out of it. I mean, Greyjoy have a great ability to recover. The card in Shadows is presumably wrong to Meek, but it could be a pinch. Um, and we, you know... it it's possible that Joe can recover from here. I mean, it's unfortunate here that Ben's going first. Yeah. Because I think that puts all the tempo in Ben's favour. Especially it's... if Ben is going to get two military challenges yeah, through. Absolutely. So whatever Joe puts on the board is probably going to die. And the other thing is that Targ have amazing tempo in the early game. I mean, especially when they've With got... With Kotho and Sunday, we're talking, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just their ability to discard. And also, if we're honest, they've got some incredible um, cheap characters that just allows them to be more efficient. They do. Like Jorah. Like yeah. Jorah. And Plaza of Pride, which allows them to, you know, have multiple challenges and make use of the impactful gadgets that you do have. Where's that plaza from? Is that one of the store... No, not store chumps. Uh, store chumps. Store chumps. You're a store chump. <laughs> I am she store chump. She's a store chump. She's a store champion. Um, is it from a G&K? Uh, I believe so. It's from the same um, G&K that Danny was in. Speaking of champions... Joe has just got military by Drogo and is going to lose Asher. Sad times. That was a reference to Asher being a chump, not you, Joe. Oh. <laughs> because you chump blocked with Asher. And uh, nice to see that Joe there is using the Blackwater Bay map. Yes. Anything to say about that? Yeah, of course. So Blackwater Bay and the silence has gone. Um, silence of the lambs. Um, so um, Blackwater Bay is an event that is happening in London. It's happening in July. I would like to say it's happening in the second week of July. Um, around the weekend of the 14th but I could be wrong on that apologies it is it wrong. that is correct um, so please do come it'd be lovely to see um, some members of the international community um, I'm hosting a couple of members of the international community namely Fleur Van Clusen from Belgium I'm also hosting Matt Chandler who at this point is international <laughs> <laughs> Chandy man, um, Chandy man. Um, but if people do need um, places to stay and do want to come, please do let us know, and we're happy to put people up as appropriate. And it should be a great weekend. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Indeed. And just worth noting that this is a um, Road Stark event, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's Road Stark event. Um, so it will the person who wins it will get a flight to Stark. Guaranteed accommodation and free entry. So do wow, you get the flights as well. I do believe so. If not. Someone will pay. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly yourself. So, well, put it this way, sound surprises. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought 
it was a combination and entry. I could, um, I could be wrong about that. I've had a beer at this point. A <laughs> um, hey, beer. Hey, probably beer. entry and accommodation, maybe flights, but possibly not. <laughs> Guys, commentate on the game. This is a balanced back and forth. Yes. Heavyweight game where so, one person has a board and the other person <laughs> doesn't. I mean, so Ben basically has done his challenges. He did a challenge with Jorah but forgot to take the betrayal token and the renown and later realised that he'd forgotten his betrayal token. He did say, I'll put the token on there just so we know how many times it's been activated. But obviously I won't take the renown at this point because I forgot it. The absolute best thing about the game so far is just looking at Joe Harrison's face and he's got this kind of bemused smile on where he's kind of stunned and not sure what's going on. <laughs> but he knows he's out, but he's just like, I'm I mean, here. <laughs> he, I mean, at the end of the day as well, I've got to commentate that um, Joe's chin and jaw is very <laughs> Judge Dredd. Like, he can play a me. He's got the angular jaw that you need to play a good Judge Dredd. Right. Um, but anyway, I mean, oh, it's, high praise. Joe's in a. Is, yeah. I, I think so. I mean, Joe's in a top tough spot. Oh, Joe's in a. I thought you were saying Joe Zimmer. I thought you were saying Joe Zimmer, and then no, I was thinking, who I'm the saying, hell's that? I said Joe. Joe's in a tough spot, um, and also I believe um, he just had to give some very good cards with Ben of the burning variety. Oh so. yeah, Dracarys. Yes, and a dip for flea bottom, which you know is really important. Did he have to give him a crown as well? I think. No, he could peg a king he had it. Oh, it's like a king. So that's what they were giving him. <laughs> Unless he's playing on hard mode. So what do you think <laughs> to uh, Joe getting Great Hall? Because that's going to reduce his ability to play out Chad. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested. He and should just have card. the Iron Gates or um, possibly Gates of the Moon. Even Rose Roads would be better than a Great Hall, I think. I don't think he's running get, um, Gates of the Moon. I think that a lot of the Greyjoy Crossing players um, did play Great Halls. I did, mm. for example. Um, and I think that it's so good in the meta. And to be honest, let's be honest, a lot of people weren't expecting Naval. <laughs> so, Fair you know, you can comfortably rely on maybe getting one or two Great Halls out. And the other thing is his setup wasn't great. Mm. So if you had one Great Hall out, you open out the gates and you get another one out, then you've got massive tempo. So I think Great Halls make sense. It's just unfortunate that... Um, he wasn't running anything else that he could fetch. The other thing that I just want to point out here as well, because it's an interesting thing to talk about, is that I think the players who did best with Greyjoy Crossing in this tournament, I mean, I played it and got knocked out by, by Joe, um, played really interesting plot lineups and lineups that their opponents weren't expecting. Um, I mean, something that Richard's played and he's been on the other streams, not to big up his ego, he's sat <laughs> next to me, so he's within... Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, um, is that um, they played really interesting plots and Richard played um, A City Besieged, which I think was a really good call when a lot of people yeah. were playing Great Halls. I was quite surprised by that plot. I I didn't expect it to be as good as what it was. Mm. And I think when I came across it, and especially when Richard was practicing um, and I <laughs> experienced it several times, it was it was just a plot that was like, oh shit, this is actually really, mm. really annoying. Even if all their le- kneeling is like Great Halls or yeah. like Illyria's Estates or whatever, yep. you know, just losing that economy for the round can be quite impactful. It shows that we've gone we've gone into a low gold on the plots, high mm. reliance on reducer locations meta. So anything that hits that is really impactful. Um, and I think at the gates was a really good call that not a lot of people spotted. In the same way, actually, that Naval is. I mean, they do similar things in that they hit what people are opening or they're hitting what they build their decks around. Yeah, and you build around it yourself. So mm. you obviously take advantage of the tempo loss that you're giving yourself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you take advantage of that while hindering your opponent more. Yeah. I mean, it's it's becoming more and more rare, isn't it, to see people playing Late Summer Feast and yeah. trading Pentoshi because you just don't need to play those big money plots anymore. You can play other things and, you know, get your location based. Sorted. That's mainly because of at the gates. Mm. Yeah. Stabilising your economy in the early game, which yeah. allows you to play more impactful plot in the later game. Yeah. yeah. So the question is, do we think at the gates is going to be a target on restriction on the next list? Maybe not the next list, possibly the ones that are after, though. Mm. Um, oh, Joe's doing a challenge. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's worth pointing out that Joe's recovered reasonably well. Yes, yeah. Yeah, He's so he bought managed... out Euro, a Go chud, um, not the Great Hall, and paid the money for Euron, bought in the silence, reacted with the eager deckhand, and then duped Euron. The only issue I can see is Euron is four strengths. Mm, which is very risky with the dragon on the board, and you know that Ben has got Dracarys and gold. 
So um, Joe's managed to do a mm. military challenger with the exec hand for one strength because it's his crossing turn. Yeah. And Ben just defended that with Viserion. Yeah. So choosing not to try and blow anyone up yet, um, but he does have the plaza so he can quite easily stun Viserion and Dracarys Euron if he wants to. Yeah, I think Joe... I think Joe will be sensible here and not do the challenges, and I think that's what's happened. Yeah, I think it's better to not put anyone in, just try and keep a bit of a board presence, and then maybe next turn you can start to save less. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we, we talked about this, um, or we'll talk about it in the future potentially, maybe <laughs> my third eye, is that um, the other thing is when you're up in the early <laughs> game and your opponent doesn't have any power on the house card, it's difficult actually. It gives your opponent more time to come back into the game because you're not moving as quickly to close the game mm. as you would do. Power challenge loses a bit of its value. Um, that's an Aegon. It is an Aegon, but it's just going to discard. Yeah. It's been used for Plaza to restun Drogo and do that second military challenge. Mm. Um, Ben's got plenty of cards in hand. He does. Yeah, and he's got a huge amount of cards on the board. So. Interesting, though, that he didn't have anything three cost or lower so he could flea bottom it in. Interesting, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, really good. It's almost like you know how to play the game, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like you've done this before. So Ben taking quite a good lead here. Mm. So getting the unopposed power challenge and then taking Dom as well. Yeah. Putting him up to nine. Yeah. The whole plot that was money for me all day, um, and it won me game on, games on its own against some people with the first snow of winter. Mm. Yeah. Um, some some boards are just really low on cost and they mm. can't handle losing all those characters for a round. Especially well, I mean, looking, at Ben's, looking at Ben's board now, like if you played first now here, you'd have one character left. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then, you know, if Joe had more eager deck hand, mm -hmm. you can use the silent to jump them in. Yeah. You might think you've board. done that in a few games, actually, mm. haven't you? So. Yeah, that's, that's what it was kind of. Yeah, if you build around, around first now. It's really good, isn't it? I mean, it creates an interesting thing here of kind of, um, oh, King of the North, that's going to be tough. So we've got, we take Westeros there, but I don't think Joe's got anything in the discard. So he might have just been going for the initiative here to make sure he was first yeah. and for the gold. Indeed. He does want King Balon, Joe does. He does. So that was a funny thing that I played Alex, I played Joe, Joe played Alex. The three of us, we all ran Greyjoy Crossing and we all played each other mm. and we all played different Balons. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, Alex played Core Balon, Joe yeah. played King Balon and I played um, the, I'm going to steal all your shit in the discard part. <laughs> um, of the three, I think Joe was playing the right Balon. I think, Which Joe? Uh, Joe House. Oh yeah. I think um, King Balon's a really good choice at the moment in Crossing. Um, and I, the more I think about it, I think he's better in the kind of deck that I was running than Core Balon. Um, whether he was better than Pillage Balon, I don't know. Um, I think Pillage Balon is a underrated card that people maybe aren't playing as much as they should. But I think King Balon is very, very strong at the moment. And For I'm me, thinking... Pillage Balon gave me a different option yeah. when mm. I needed it. It gave me another set of cards to play with. Mm. You were getting um, some fun different characters, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. You do, yeah. Um, I like when you um you stole someone's Wyman and then use someone dying to stand Wyman and draw a card or something, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, Balon got put to the sword. They trigger <laughs> Wyman, stand, draw a card, and then kill Wyman to claim. Nice. That's good. Uh, yeah, you just get different options with Pillage Balon. Mm. It gives you another set of cards that you can use and another mm. set of options, which is quite handy when you're looking to do three challenges. Yeah. And you need options. No, absolutely. And I mean, one thing that we haven't talked about um, is... One of the decks that I think was really interesting going into this to big up a fellow London player was Isian playing Greyjoy Greenside, mm. which has been a bit of a. I played of, him as well. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a really interesting deck. Um, Ooh, I think sad. he was unlucky to not have done a bit better with it than he did. You went four two. Yeah, it's just a good record. Yeah. Is this the um, raiding Kalasar? Is that it right? Is the raiding Kalasar. Yes, one so of my favourite cards. Do you increase claim when you have uh, another attacking blood rider? Ah. I think they have to be participating as well. They do, I believe. It's attacking, so... Blood Rider, attacking so Blood Rider. Drogo isn't a Blood Rider, so he'd need to put out a Koth or something, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yes, or oh, Blood on My Blood or something like that to go yeah. get uh, Jogo, or if he's running out of He's only got one gold. Mm. So it's going to be quite fair Probably. if he um, gets to trigger it. That would be very, very mean... Well, basically game over if he has Kotha. Kneeling the faction card and paying one here. 
to play Consuming Flames on the Murmur Murmur Murmur. And there goes for Sunday. And there's Sunday into play. Just worth noting that Droga does have, have a Beggar King on him, which is why Ben is able to trigger his effects. Yep. Um, do you know if Joe Harrison won the reset? Alan Mugulis? I believe he does, yes. He, he obviously been trying to stall out, draw some more economy card, and I think if Joe plays any reset at this point, he loses straight out. Because he's struggling in card advantage. He hasn't got mm. the board presence in terms of backboard, um, and Ben's got the recursion with three bottom. So oh, and we've got the there's Kotho Kotho. there. <clears throat> Sorry, Rebecca. No, no, it's all right. So Kotho and the reigning Kalasar going in from military. Um, ben, sorry, Joe defending with Euron. Yeah. Um, to stop it from going unopposed, but it is going to be too clean due to the Raven Kalasar's ability. And that's wipes Joe's board. It should be really straightforward now for Ben just to do, um, what, three more challenges? Yeah. And Joe, just get all Joe the obviously unopposed. hasn't even got boats to put in with the no. silent for economy. He I mean, just called and it there. that's game. Yeah. So Joe has conceded to Ben. Um, and Ben will be going through to the top four. Ben must be feeling like a fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> but I've enabled everybody on winning him in the top four. He is he's, uh, doing very well for himself there. <laughs> I mean, I, I, my heart does go out to Joe, not just the fellow London player, but also as a person who, in that game, he had an absolutely catastrophic setup and opened yeah. the worst plot against the one person <laughs> who's running naval. Yeah, sometimes it's just difficult. If your deck screws you over, then there's not a lot you can do. Yeah. Um, but we'll just round it up there then. So thank you very much, Alex, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> it's been lovely having you. And um, thanks as always to our viewers. If you would like to support the channel, you can go. Uh, you can do so by going to paintrip.com forward slash the White Walkers. And we will be back with another top four game uh, shortly. So thanks everyone and see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.